Anders, you have started a new department at Sony dealing with wearable devices and health. Tell yeah. me a little bit about how that came to be and what you're working on. We started off this as an innovation competition. So we did a lot of feasibility last year in 2018 where we interviewed a lot of elderly people and people with their different chronic conditions about their experience with digitalization. And a lot of what we came up with in that kind of feasibility is that it's really complex to use smartphones, smartwatches, all this. Seems it's really hard. Really hard it is. And, and there was quite a little stressful for a lot of these people to really manage the, the technology. So that was coming out of it and also that the technology they were, they were not made for measuring different kind of medical conditions or being part of that kind of uh, remote monitoring. Yeah. So that was the idea behind this and uh, with that and uh, looking at the different IP that Sony have internally about IoT and uh, electronics and so on, we proposed to put together a new sort of wearable which is based out of IoT rather than... Internet smart. of Things. Exactly. Yeah. Right, so, yeah. and so what did you come up with? We come up with this amazing okay. watch. Okay. Which, uh, we have chosen all the technology in here to yeah. get as much battery life as possible. Okay. So we are looking at more than seven days of battery life of this device. Wow. We can have seen some use cases where it's actually up to a month battery life depending on how it's being used for the different uh, use cases but it's we had chosen the black and white screen because a lot of the feedback we got is that these very colorful displays is very difficult to read for wow. elderly people right so we actively chosen a display which is very bright and if it's connected to the Internet of Things then it's censoring things in the house so it's censoring things both via typical the fitness wellness sensors like heart rate, heart rate variability, stress, sleep and so on. But it can also connect uh, using Bluetooth low energy to any kind of other external sensor. So your scale, blood pressure monitor or whatever. And because it's always connected, it can always connect into the cloud without having a smartphone with it or a Wi-Fi connection or anything like that. It's always connected. Wow. So when you talk about your um ideal client, yeah. what do they look like? Someone that has the business within remote monitoring or mobile health and they have been trying to do a lot around smart watches and so on but not really got the use case to work out for them because the limitation of that platform. So we want to be the, the add-on to their, their business and complement this because with, with this wearable it actually covers a lot of these kind of areas where they have a difficulty to fulfill the needs. Right. Always with you, you can shower with it, you can have it in the sleep, you can have it when you travel and everywhere. So it's really adding a new value and a new c capability for these companies. Certainly when someone comes out with a new technology there are always hurdles to be had. I'm sure you've had many tech, um, technology iterations we don't even have to talk about that what are some other barrier to entries that have appeared that are in real life the barriers is, have been more to explain the benefit of the platform and the always having this that it's not a consumer device it's a business to business device hmm. so that is have been a bit of a struggle because we don't do the turnkey solution. Mm -hmm. We provide a utility a platform mm -hmm. that can collect the data. To bring it all to bring together. It all together. Like a hub. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that have been so everyone is Sony in the healthcare. Yes, sort of, yeah. but not really. Obviously being a hub for all of those types of things in the house, yeah. um, you're measuring a lot of data and getting a lot of real time data. Yeah. Is that always a positive? I would say so, yes. <laughs> I think it's better to have the data and do something good about that data and treat it with privacy and integrity. So I think it's good to have it. What is interesting with our solution is we have this end-to-end -end encryption. So we are really taking the data from the device directly into our partner's backend system. Sony do, do not have any access to any of the patient data or anything like that. If you compare that with some of the other vendors, they actually get the data and, and have access to that specific data. We, we are not in that business. We are helping these uh, companies to create a good turnkey solution without interfering, to, so to say, but still giving the security of it. In the world of compliance, in the world of someone even putting the watch on every day, um, what have you discovered in terms of consistency? We are involved in two research projects in Europe. 
One is, is looking at getting patients to be more compliant to ordinations. So uh, they think that by having a wearable that can keep reminding the person about their, their taking their medicine, taking their weight, measuring their blood pressure, yes, doing the kind of activity that the doctor have given them as an ordination makes them more compliant. So if you take that, then suddenly the wearable becomes something that you work on on an everyday basis for improving your condition. Mm -hmm. And I think the compliance, both in keeping it on, will be much higher because you always interact for a good purpose with it. Right. It's not reading your emails or streaming your music, it's actually for your spe specific condition. Right. And that is quite motivating. And arguably all you have to do is put it on. Yes. Right? It's Definitely. that simple. That simple. So you charge it, you put it on and it's actually communicating. No, no extra work no or no pins, no nothing like that. It's actually working out of the box that That's way. Awesome.